Welcome back to the McCowan Podcast, DuPont, Dehatchek, Burnside. I'm John Shannon. Kevin, um, Bruce Cassidy is Stanley Cup champion coach. How difficult will it be for that team to repeat? I think they're going to be right in the mix. I mean, <laughs> getting to the fourth round and then winning it, a uh, different story. But they still excite me. Uh, I, I, you know, most intrigued, of course, to be with, you know, Eich Eichel ends up leading them in, in the point production. Uh, and even then, you know, he had, a, he had an excellent year, all things considered in terms of his health. Uh, but now are we really going to see the Eichel that was going to be the dominant franchise player? They only got glimpses of that in Buffalo. So, yes, I think, I think uh, obviously they've had to churn the account too a little bit because of the cap. Um yeah, I, maybe they take a, overall. Maybe they take a step back in terms of offense, but they they don't. They, they were they were an exciting bunch, uh, and, and I was thinking of them when we were having the discussion on Tampa, like who's going to play goal. Let's not forget they won hmm. a Stanley Cup really with two backup goaltenders. So we sit here and say, how do you win it without a without the best power play, and how do you win it without the the best goaltender or without a franchise goaltender well they did it they did it so well they, but they but, but they they do have one of the great defenses even when they're healthy they do. that defense was big and 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 i it, just as a, a personal aside the 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 eichel scenario there is amazing because he may be the best player but he doesn't have to be the leader there that's alex petrangelo and that's mark stone yeah so Ico can actually worry about just playing hockey. And Scotty, I think that's one of the things for a guy like Ico that takes a, a, a lot of pressure off of him because he's a great hockey player. We knew that, but we didn't ever think he was a great leader. Uh, yeah. And, and I mean, the situation in Buffalo was pretty dire and, you know, he, I know he bristled at the whole McDavid comparisons, and, you know, go, always in McDavid's shadow and, and it did fall to pieces in Buffalo. And, you know, you can blame the player. But they made him the captain way too early, too. Yeah, yes. well, that's what I'm saying. You you know, you blame the organization. You blame the structure there. And, you know, I think you're absolutely right, John. I mean, there's a guy who gets to go play to the maximum of his ability. He's come from, you know, he charted his own course in terms of dealing with a serious neck injury in defiance of the Buffalo Sabres. The Golden Knights took a chance. It turned out great, and I think really sets a template moving forward. Where players, why shouldn't they have control over their own bodies and how they heal best and are deal with ailments the best? But yeah, no, I think it's a great, and they're a really good team. Um, yeah, I'm I'm with Kevin. I look at that goaltending, and I think they used five different goalies last year. Yeah. It is to me the whole trending of. You know, are we looking now at like the NFL with running backs where you're just plugging in? Right. It doesn't matter who's your running back. You just plug one in and see what happens and make, you know, you, you're going to be okay. And, you know, mm -hmm. maybe that's what's going to happen in Tampa. It happened in Vegas and to a large degree, it happened with Colorado the year before when pa Pablo Francis was just played just as much as Darcy Cumper in the playoffs and they won a cup and neither were stand on your head. So maybe you don't need a Vasilevsky or a Sorokin or a Shesterkin. You just need to have a really good team and have a guy who's capable. And, you know, I remember people making fun of Chris Osgood when he won, you know, however many number of cups he's, you know, in Detroit, you know, the most average goalie to win a cup. Who cares if you're average as long as you're standing there at the end? And I think we've seen that the last couple of years and, Maybe that's just the way it's going to be now. You don't need to have an $8 million goalie. If you have two $2 million goalies that can take you the distance, man, that's pretty good economics. Eric, uh, uh, Scotty touched on uh, Eichel-McDavid comparisons. It's hard to imagine an offseason that Connor McDavid was as dominant as he was, and he was the second most popular Connor going. Um, <laughs> so here we are, the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, the stories coming out of Edmonton, the team has never been more focused. The team has never had more captain skates. Everybody in town, I mean, all the Ontario Oilers skated together here for a month. Um, but what the heck are the Edmonton Oilers? Well, first of all, they were a really good team last year. And when, when we got to the second round of the playoffs and there were eight teams left, I honestly thought they were going to win the cup 
last year and and they ran into it. we're talking about goaltending the problem and when you have goaltending that's just good enough is that sometimes if it slips a little past that and becomes mediocre to not good enough then then, then that costs you and i think that that's what happened to them in the playoffs last year stewart skinner gave them an unexpectedly strong season you know in the, the calder conversation but his level slipped and it was slipping already in, in the opening round but they managed to get to past the los angeles king so you know the, I, I like everything that they've done in terms of reinforcing that group. My, my questions there are, you know, Matias Ekholm, when he came in at the trade deadline last year, was just the thing that they needed, you know, big, tough. Um, you know, what Vegas has four of, Edmonton finally got one of those guys. And, and this year, he's had some issues with a hip. If, if it's just minor and he can get through it, and, and if he's a, a solid 75-game player for him, I think, that defense is going to be fine. If there's issues there, then I think that there's going to be questions because, you know, they have a decent third pair. You know, Bouchard improved last year, but but they're a little bit thin on defense. And how you shield goaltenders like Aiden Hill and Logan Thompson is having an exceptional defense in front of them. And I'm not sure that Edmonton has that with Ekholm's health. If so, you look at the top three teams in the Pacific. They're all doing the, the goalie tandem thing. You know, at Edmonton, you know, there's talk that, that Campbell might reemerge as, as the number one guy there. Um, Vegas is probably going to have a 50 50 split. And, and at Los Angeles, you know, until they put Reddick on waivers today, had three goalies making $3 million and the highest paid was, was Phoenix Coffee. I mean, they are hoping that the magic that Cam Talbot and, and Todd McClellan had in 2016-17, when Talbot won 42 games for Edmonton, when Todd was coaching there, uh, reappears this year. And that is a roll of the dice. Now, I think it's a defensible roll of the dice because, you know, they've you know, put resources into Gavrikov to, to beef up the blue line to Dubois. Now they've got three centers that are really, you know, I mean, that one to three center ice group is the envy of. 25 to 27 teams in, in the league and they're taking a chance that goaltending is you know which was good enough for vegas last year good enough for colorado two years ago that theirs meets that standard so we'll see but I, I like their structure and their defense better than than edmonton's and i think it's not at uh, vegas level but it's it's close uh, so so uh, would you suggest that there are three teams coming out of the pacific eric or is there a chance somebody like a Calgary or a Vancouver can reemerge? Well, I, I, I mean, I think those three are the three best teams. And then, then you know, Calgary to me is, is a wild card. So I have been down at their practice a couple of times. And uh, and everything that people are saying is true. Uh, the mood is a lot lighter. Um, when I was there last week, uh, you know, the, I think you know, Kadri was, was speaking and he was talking about the Blue Jays and, and his availability was going on a bit long. So Huberto was there a little bit of byplay back and forth and laughing and joking about their shots. And, and you could just, it, it was just, it was different, you know, like last year, it wasn't really a fun place to be and it wasn't really a fun place to play. And, and you always had the feeling that people were kind of walking on eggshells a little bit uh, in Calgary. It doesn't feel that way. So how much does that matter? Well, you know, I, I think, you know, having a happy workplace, no matter what you do, uh, Im improves your production. So I do think that Kadri is going to be better. Huberto is going to be better. Lindholm is going to be better. Markstrom is going to be better. And I thought Mackenzie Weger in the second half of last year was very good after a just a so-so start. So they got good pieces there. And they were are not that far removed from, from winning the, the division. So yeah, I think they're I think they have a chance to, to be a playoff team. Whether they can, you know, close the gap between the top three teams or come in as a wild card, but I think four, I think four can come out of the Pacific for sure. Scotty, you've been, you you spent some time in the central, uh, particularly with the wild. Um I, I get a sense that everybody thinks the, the the central division's in a bit of a rebuild, other than Colorado and Dallas. I, th I think that's fair, and actually, Colorado. When you think about, you know, with no Gabriel Landeskog for this season, and bringing in Ryan Johansson, I, I think uh, I think Ryan Johansson has the potential to have an enormous year there. I don't think he's ever been a guy that has, you know, shouldered the, you know, the. The, the the heavy burden of being a leader and you think back to to Nashville and and really with Nashville buying up both Matt Duchesne and 
and uh, Ryan Johansson. I think that tells you a lot about, you know, some of the disappointments in Nashville with those two guys in those leadership roles, leadership, or at least cap wise leadership. And I think Ryan Johansson is going to fit in nicely in Colorado. And you've got, um, you know, you've, you've got some young players who are going to get a chance in, in Colorado. So, uh, you know, it, but definitely Nashville's in that, you know, Barry Trotz is trying to re, you know, retool on the fly there. And, uh, um, you know, Minnesota still paying, I think they've got $14.7 million in dead cap space this year and next year. So still trying to, you know, and they're a good, good team, you know, Bill Guerin's built a really nice team there and they drafted and developed well, but you have to, when you're making the decisions that you made in buying out Ryan Suter and Zach Parise a couple of years ago. So, yeah, you know, to me, Dallas is the most complete. They're, to me, the most complete team in the Western Conference. And I know Rupe hints. D- Dallas more than Colorado? Oh, I, I think by a country mile. Wait. I just think of the cornerstone pieces and the depth and the coaching. Like, I, I, you know, Dallas is the best team in the West. I from top to bottom, there just aren't, you know, there's no question on Jake Ottinger. There's no question on Miro Haskinen on the back end, Robertson up front, Johnson, you know, finished. I think he had second most goals of any rookie. No one even talked about him. And then they add Matt Duchesne. I love that Dallas team. I, and I think they're going to take some beating. So, you know, what? to me, it all falls from Dallas in the central. Um, I do like, you know, Minnesota, if the goaltending continues to hold up, um, Nashville's going to be in the mix. I think Colorado is is definitely going to be there. Um, you know, Winnipeg, like again, I, I have no idea what to make of that team. They should be a playoff team. They're built well, and now they've got all these pieces back outside of Blake Wheeler. Um, you know, and I will tell you this: Arizona is going to be better. I don't think they may. I see uh, they're on a lot of lists of dark horse to make the playoffs. I I don't see that they can be a playoff team. But they are, you know, they're Bill Armstrong building a good, solid team there, and they are going to be a difficult out. Um, so yeah, not this, I mean, the central's not to be sneered at. Yes, there's some you know, teams in a state of flux there. Like I think St. Louis, I don't know what they're, I don't know what to me, they're not a playoff team, and they are a team that is declining or trending down. But there's a there are still a lot of good teams in the central. Uh um and and with a with legitimate playoff aspirations 